how well do you actually understand circles when it comes to the subject of geometry? Well, uh, circles is actually a big topic within geometry, and there's a lot to know, a lot of formulas, but nothing too difficult. But if you're pretty strong with circles and the respective formulas, well, this should be a very easy problem to solve. Matter of fact, you don't even need your calculator. All right, so what is the problem? Well, let me go ahead and explain this right now. So we have this circle, then we have this triangle is kind of overlapping the circle. Now, this leg of the triangle is going through the center of the circle. So this is a diameter. And then this line right here is a line that is tangent to this circle. Now, that is a fancy word that uh, means that this line touches a circle exactly at one point right there. Okay, so that's the point of tangency. So this is what we would call a tangent line. But it's basically a line that just touches a circle right there. So we have this line or this part of the triangle, which is a di diameter because it's running through the center of the circle. Then we have this lovely triangle being formed. All right, so this is the setup. Now, uh, this angle of the triangle, okay, now this is a particular type of triangle. You can tell by looking at that notation right there. But this angle right here is 47 degrees. All right, so this is the information in the problem. But what is the question? Well, the question is, what is the measure of this arc right here in the circle? This arc highlighted uh, uh, with yellow. Now, an arc is just a segment, okay, a piece of the circle, all right? And we're going to measure that in degrees. So what is the measure of this arc right here? That is the question. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but you really don't need one. But this is a multiple choice question, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 40 degrees, B is 47 degrees, C is 75 degrees, and D is 86 degrees. All right, now, if you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully explain how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now let's suppose you come across this on a math test, and you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I didn't study for my test because I was watching Netflix all you know night or whatever the case is. Hey, I totally get it. you know. Uh, but what are you going to do if you encounter a problem like this? Well, if you are thinking, hey, I know what I'm going to do, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm going to guess. And that is exactly what you should do. You should always take a guess unless you're going to get penalized uh, for, you know, getting uh, for a wrong answer. Now, that can be the case on some exams like the SAT or ACT. So you just need to understand the um you know, uh, grading policies for your particular exam. In other words, if you get the wrong answer, uh, it's not just zero, they take off a point, right? So in that case, maybe you don't want to take a guess. But in this case, for most exams, you know, you have a one out of four chance. But before you guess, we should actually have a reasonable guess, right? So let's just look at this arc right here. So a circle, a full circle is what? That's 360 degrees. So if we kind of think about this circle in terms of quarters, right? So let's just go from here to here. Well, this is 90 degrees, and then another uh, quarter of the circle would be 90 degrees, and then another quarter right here would be 90 degrees, and then another quarter would be 90 degrees, right? For a total of 360 degrees. So just kind of thinking about that, this arc right here kind of appears to be a, you know, not a complete quarter, but it's kind of going from here and really does kind of continue on. But it looks like it's pretty close to one quarter of a circle, which would mean that uh, if it was a complete exact quarter, it would be precisely 90 degrees, right? But it's not 90 degrees. It's a little bit less than 90 degrees. So these two answers right here would make, you know, uh, you know, reasonable sense to guess, right? So if you took a guess, you know, and you just kind of eyeballed it, you're like, well, I don't really know. But you know what? I think uh, it looks like, you know, maybe 75, 86 degrees. Perfect. You know, here, 
you know, you would have a 50-50 chance because we know that the correct answer is D. So when you do uh, guess, just don't take a blind guess. Try to at least use the information to help yourself out. Because if you can eliminate at least one, that really, you know, boosts your odds of getting the question correct. Okay, now whether you know the math or not, it's still a game of getting points. So like 40 degrees, you know, 40 degrees is like, like right here, right? So this is 47. All right, so we just kind of belabored that point. But in order to really, um, you know, figure this problem out, we're just simply going to have to know the math, know the geometry involved. So uh, let's go ahead and get into that right now. But again, if you are facing a multiple choice question, that's a huge advantage on any math exam. So think about it. And even if you did the math and you're like, okay, I came up with 40 degrees as my answer, you should always ask yourself, you know, is that a reasonable answer? If it's not, maybe you did something wrong. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the actual situation. And just to make this a little bit uh, more precise, let's get some let's get some points to these, you know, this diagram here. So here's the diagram and kind of uh, sketch it out again. So we'll call this point B, we'll call this point C, we'll call this point A, and then uh, we'll call this point G, and then uh, O will be the center of this circle. So really what we're looking for is the measure of the arc that goes from B to G. So I could, you know, frame this question, tell me the measure of arc B, G. Okay, so actually I would write it this way with the little M, what's the measure of arc B, G? But I'm kind of making this problem uh, visually uh, easier to interpret, okay? So I could just write this notation, but why do that? You know, because that's really not uh, so important. What is important here is that we understand the principles. Okay, so we have a line tangent to the circle. Now, um, when you have a line tangent to a circle, like this line is right here, this point of tangency, as we go to the center, you always end up with a 90 degree right angle, okay? But even if you didn't know that, I already told you that because you can see I have a right angle notation right here. So we know that this angle is 90 degrees, okay? We already know that this angle is 47 degrees. Well, let's kind of start, you know, adding some more information here. We can determine this angle of the triangle, angle A, because we know that there's 180 degrees in a triangle. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out uh, what angle A is, this right here. So it's uh, going to be 180 minus the 47 degrees. And let me go ahead and show you this right here. We can add up 47 plus the 90, and then we'll subtract that away from the 180. Okay, so this is going to be 180 minus the 47 minus 90. So we're left with 43 degrees. Okay, so this angle right here is 43 degrees. And really, that is uh, the uh, key to solving this problem because effectively we can kind of look at this problem but don't not get distracted with this triangle we can just look at this angle a uh, being 43 degrees and just focus in on the respective arc being formed by this inscribed angle all right so now what we need is a lovely formula and uh, you know these formulas are not that difficult but uh, if you don't remember the formula, well, I'm going to tell you that right now. But first, I'm going to show you this, which is an invitation to support this YouTube channel because this YouTube channel is all about trying to make math clear and understandable. And really, my number one goal beyond teaching uh, math is uh, encouragement. Okay, I don't want anyone ever to give up on themselves when it comes to mathematics. That is a huge problem. Okay, so if you think, uh, you know, oh, math is, I'm not good in math, I'm bad at math, you know, or anything like that, you need to get that out of your head. That is a complete, absolute barrier for you learning. If I'm trying to teach you math and I'm over here, I'm like, hey, look, I'm explaining it really nice. And you're like, I'm trying to learn, but I am uh, bad at math. Okay. If this is what's going on in your brain, okay, as I'm trying to teach you, you're just focused on, all right, I don't get what this guy is saying because I'm bad at math. Well, you're preoccupied with this, you know, false, you know, sense of what you, you know, think you are, okay, at least in terms of uh, your potential to learn math. It's a huge problem in mathematics. I've been doing this for decades and decades. So when I help people in math, I, I'm, you know, I'm kind of smart about it. I'm like, all right, before I even teach you anything, I'm going to check in on your mental attitude, okay? And oftentimes, if people are like, oh, you know, maybe 
not so confident in themselves and their ability, I work on that. Okay. I'll be like, Hey, listen, you can do this. And then, you know, once you start feeling uh, more confident or more energetic, everything goes much, much smoother, right? That's been my secret kind of weapon in terms of getting people to really understand math. So don't give up on math, all right? Get the help you need. It does take a lot of work, time, and effort, but if you need um, instruction that really works for you, I think you'll like my full math courses. You can find links to those in the description below. And for the things that we're talking about here, uh, you might want to check out like my full geometry course or my math skills rebuilder course. All right, so let's get back to this problem. So what we need is a lovely formula. This, uh, the formula that we're talking about here is not difficult. So this is an inscribed angle inside of a circle. Okay, that's just how we kind of refer to it. Now the measure, the measure of this angle right here, and we can kind of see this by this simple example. This is the measure of angle ABC is one half of the arc uh, formed from the angle. So this is the arc formed by the angle. So let's suppose the arc is 100 degrees. The inscribed angle is literally one half of it 50 degrees, right? So we don't even have to try to decipher this fancy formula. So if you have an, uh, an inscribed angle, okay, whatever the arc is, the inscribed, the measure of the inscribed angle is half of the arc, meaning that if we know the measure of the inscribed angle, the arc is double that, okay? So this is a perfect, lovely little example to figure out the answer, and it's not going to be that difficult. All right, so we did all this work to figure out that this angle of the triangle is 43 degrees, but really we're talking about this inscribed angle here. So uh, 43 degrees is one half of the arc. Okay, so that means that the arc is double 43 degrees, which is 43 times two, which of course is 86 degrees. So the measure of arc BG would be 86 degrees. Okay, so as you can tell, you know, geometry doesn't have to be that complicated. Now, you, you learn a ton of stuff in math. There's a lot of formula, formulas, uh, and this is true at all levels of math. So, you know, one thing you don't want to do is get overwhelmed by all these formulas. That's why you must take notes, okay? If you want uh, really uh, uh, probably my number one tip to be successful in math beyond thinking positively about yourself is to take great math notes, okay? There is an absolute direct correlation to excellent note-taking and being successful in math. All right, so hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.